Hello, so today we're going to practice creating a light value and a dark value using paint and then adding that value to an animal. So this is our practice sheet. When you get your practice sheet, the first thing you want to do is write your name on it. I'm going to write my name on the back. And the day you have art, day A, day B, day C. You're going to flip it over. And the supplies that you need, you need a placemat. The placemat is a good place for you to rest your mixing tray on. You need a mixing tray. You need two of one color. So you choose one color. The color cannot be black or white. So any of the colors back there in the rainbow, brown. And then you're going to add a white and a black. I got two paintbrushes, large and medium. You are going to need a sponge and a water basin. So I like to put my water basin and sponge on a place on a blue lunch tray to carry to my table. And what you're going to do is you are going to mix the color in with the white and maybe black in with the color. Um, you don't need a whole lot of black, but you do need to leave some plain color. So I'm going to leave this as my plain purple and I'm going to add purple to this white. So I'm going to leave some purple in there and I'm going to try not to touch the white paint and get white mixed in with this regular purple because I want it just to stay regular. So I'm kind of dipping my paintbrush in, getting some paint and then pulling it across the edge of the divot there so that now I can mix it in. Now, when you mix it up, this is not mixed completely. This is all swirled and it's not mixed. It's just a just I didn't I barely swirled the paint around this needs to be a solid color so you can see the purple swirled in with the white and you can see the purple and the white so this isn't mixed in yet you need to keep mixing this around until that marble swirly effect goes away so it's going to take you a minute or two to get this mixed up thoroughly so you can't just kind of swirl your paintbrush around real quick and then be done so I'm not going to use all of the white, so I have some white here that I didn't mix in, but for the rest of this, this is a solid tint of purple. It's a solid color. I don't have purple and white swirled around in there. This is all one color. So it's kind of coming off the edge here. All right, so this is going to be my light value. This is going to be the color as is, so the medium value. So now I need to mix a dark value. Now I cannot use this paintbrush to mix the black with the purple because then that's got white on my paintbrush and then that would make a grayish purple and that would be completely wrong. So I have to rinse my paintbrush off completely. I like to use the teeth at the bottom of the water basin to run my paintbrush across. Then I'm going to pull my paintbrush that's wet across the sponge because we want a fairly dry paintbrush when we're working with liquid tempera. And now I'm going to mix some of this black in with the purple. When you're mixing your shade, you don't need as much black to change the color as you think. Now, again, this is not mixed completely. You can see purple and black swirled together, but they are not a solid color yet. So you need to keep mixing and mixing and swirling with your paintbrush until this becomes a solid color and does not have that black and purple swirl. So now this is a solid color. So now I have created my light value, my dark value, and my regular color, my medium. So now you need to decide how you're going to add the value to your animal. Are you going to try to do it realistically like we did on our worksheet for the drawing where we did the wolf and we did the light value at the top like the moon was shining on the wolf and then we did the medium value in the middle and then near the bottom of the wolf we did the dark value because the moon isn't shining on the underneath and there's a shadow cast or do you want to do it more like the hammerhead shark on that worksheet where we did kind of the dark value around the edge we did the medium value and then the light value on the inside. You get to decide. I'm going to go ahead and try to shade this in realistically by putting the darker value at the bottom, medium value in the middle, light value at the top. But I don't want stripes. I mean, it would be very easy for you just to paint a dark stripe, rinse your paintbrush off, dry it off, paint a medium stripe, rinse your paintbrush off, dry it off, and then paint your light stripe. That doesn't look very realistic. So I'm going to show you how you can kind of blend this in. 
And I'm glad I got, I got two paintbrushes because these feet are gonna be a dark value and this paintbrush is way too big for to paint these feet. So I'm just gonna start at the belly of the bird and paint in this dark value as high up as I wanna get. And I think I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna set my paintbrush down. Actually, I'm done with this, so I'm gonna put it in the water and I'm gonna take my medium paintbrush, get the dark value on my medium paintbrush and paint in these feet very carefully. Neatness matters. It shouldn't look like a big blob or smear of paint. You need to take your time and try to paint inside your animal, inside your black Sharpie outline as neatly as possible and try to stay within it. If you paint outside it, it starts to kind of just look like a blob of paint and we lose the visual that it's an animal. All right, so I have my dark value where I want it. So now I'm gonna move to my medium value. So I'm not skipping around, I'm just kind of working my way up. So I'm going to rinse my paintbrush off, dry my paintbrush off, and now I'm gonna go to just the medium value, which is the color as is, nothing mixed in. And I'm gonna overlap this with that dark value and kind of go back and forth and smear it so that I try to keep away from making just a very clear stripe. And you can always see your brush strokes when you're painting. So I'm not gonna just paint straight over this wing because it's gonna make it look very flat. So what I'm going to do is paint around the wing and then paint inside the wing. And that will also help with the visual of the different parts of the bird to paint neatly staying within that space the wing is over the back of the bird so this little tiny triangle should probably be a dark value so I'm going to go back with my smaller paintbrush and a dark value in a minute okay so this is about as far up that I want the medium value you can see all my brush strokes so if they look messy if your brush strokes look messy go back and try to smooth them out pulling your paintbrush long brush strokes that might help to just to keep away the messy look of a painting. Right, and then I'm gonna rinse my paintbrush off because I'm changing colors, dry my paintbrush off, and now I'm gonna go to the tint, and this is gonna be the top of my bird. And I'm gonna try to overlap this tint onto the medium value and blend that in. I don't want to see stripes. So where the, the lighter value touches the medium value, I'm gonna go back with my paintbrush and try to blend that in. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back and get that dark value on my smaller paintbrush, fill in this little tiny spot. And then for the head, as an artist, I can decide what I wanna do, but I'm trying to do it realistically with the lighter value at top, medium in the middle, and the darker value at the bottom. So this is going to probably need to be lighter value. And so I'm gonna use my smaller paintbrush and the lighter value to fill in. Neatness matters, so try to stay within the space. I'm gonna use it to fill in this, and I'm not gonna paint over the eye. I'm going to paint around it as carefully as I possibly can. I didn't do a perfect job, but I didn't just paint over it sloppily, so neatness matters. I can't stress that enough. Take your time, don't rush. And then finally, the beak. Now at this point, I would like you to look at your animal, look at the bird, because we're all doing a bird together, and make sure it's not a stripe. We don't have a straight line going across the bird. And we really don't with, I've kind of blended them in. Now, if you decide to do your bird where you do the outline, the dark value, then the medium value, then the light value, again, that shouldn't be stripey. So you shouldn't be taking your paintbrush and just painting around the outside of the bird going over the wing. You want it to stay within the bird and I wanna show you what I mean by that. So let's say I'm gonna do the dark value on the outside first, so I'm gonna rinse and dry my paintbrush, take the dark value. I don't want you just to take the dark value straight up the side of the bird over the wing. I want you to stop when you get to the wing, get that little space, and then pick up your paintbrush again as you're going around the outer edge. This, if you do it this way, then you don't have to consider where the sun or moon is shining 
and where the light value is, you're just doing light and dark value around the outer edge, like we did on our hammerhead. So then I would do this again on the wing. Then I would rinse my paintbrush off, dry my paintbrush off, and go to the medium value, which is just the color as is. And I would blend these, try to overlap and blend these together a little bit so that it doesn't look just like stripes. Painting is hard. Paint, painting takes a lot of practice to make it look not sloppy. So take your time, this is not a race. Okay, and then maybe the rest of the bird would be the lighter value. So I'd rinse my paintbrush off, dry it off, and take that lighter value. Paint in, try to paint in the white paper completely and don't leave any white spaces. All right. That creates kind of a neat effect. I mean, it, it you know, when it starts out, it looks kind of messy, but if you kind of go back and play with your brush strokes and kind of pull them in the direction, like pull them in the direction of the wing, pull them in the direction of the body, it kind of creates a neat effect. And then for your head, you could do it any way you wanted. So on my previous bird, I did the lighter value at the top, so I felt like I needed to do the lighter value at the top of the head, but since I'm doing it where the outline is dark, I could paint this part of the bird um, whichever values I want because I've shown and met the learning objective by showing light, medium, and dark value on the bird itself. And again, I'm not gonna just paint right over the eye. It, that would be easy, but it would also look sloppy, so I'm gonna paint around the eye using my smaller paintbrush. I'm so glad I got two sizes of paintbrushes because one large paintbrush just would have been way too sloppy to paint in this entire bird. I really needed this smaller paintbrush to fill in those smaller spaces. The lighter value is also known as a tint, and the darker value is the shade. All right, and so there's my bird where I just did the outer edge, dark, then came in with the medium, and then the light. And then here is my bird with the light value at the top, medium, and, and bottom. I want you to practice. You do not have to use purple. You can use whatever color you want, and you're gonna do one of those two value practices. And then you're gonna take this and your messy paintbrushes back to the sink, and you're gonna clean this out completely, clean out your paintbrushes completely. And if you were the last person to use the water basin and sponge, you'll put the tray and water basin and sponge away. Good job, third grade.